Hello, I just want to take a moment to talk about something that has been on my mind at least for the last couple of months and I'm sure has been on your minds as well and that is the link between the destruction of nature and disease, COVID-19 and the loss of nature. And there's a great article that I came across on the World Economic Forum website um, that really tries to link the two in, in simple terms. It's sort of a primer and reading it prompted me to think about three key points that I want to make. The first is that in the last 50 years, so essentially in my lifetime, wildlife populations around the world have declined by 60%. Now, I knew that. What I didn't know was a complete shocker to me is that in the same time period, infectious diseases has quadrupled, gone through the roof. Clearly, these two things are linked. An investment in preventing the destruction of nature is also an investment in health in keeping us healthy. The second point is around the importance of deforestation or the prevention of deforestation. Now, what I've been thinking about is wildlife trafficking and wildlife trade, and there's a lot out there, and rightly so, we should be concerned. Now is the moment to act, to close the loopholes, and really just to end this practice of having these giant markets, and I've visited some of them, where you have everything from civet cats to pangolins in large numbers in the middle of a city of like 10, 11 million people. That is really just pushing the boundary. That is asking for a transmission. But beyond that, what is the real driver behind disease is deforestation. It turns out that for things like malaria or dengue fever or even Ebola, those rates tend to skyrocket when you have deforestation. And there are good papers that link the two. So ending deforestation, particularly deforestation, not only is good for the climate, you know, by trapping all that carbon dioxide and capturing it, but it's also good for the planet in a much more immediate sense in that it keeps us safe, keeps us healthy. And the third is around sustainability. And as we think about what kind of economy we want, you know, sort of post COVID. Now, we all know about sustainable commodities and this coffee that I'm drinking right now is sustainably sourced, but people don't live in commodities. They actually live in place. So you take a place like um, North Sumatra, where we and lots of other great conservation groups work in. In North Sumatra, what you have is a model where you can see government, communities, and uh, businesses, many businesses which you would be familiar with, all working together to make sure that the landscape is productive. So, you know, coffee, uh, palm oil, rubber, cocoa production continues or even increases while at the same time deforestation rates are brought down and really ended. And you can start seeing the data from these places now that show that both are actually possible. And that's what we should be driving towards. That's a win-win. It's a, actually a win-win-win. It's obviously a win for nature, but it's a double win for people because it not only provides rural jobs, now more important than ever, but it also keeps the entire planet, in some sense, safe. So take a look at it. So the World Economic Forum, you know, here I wrote it down for you. Sorry about the low production value of my studio, but weforum.org backslash agenda. And you can just type in the box uh, COVID uh, and nature and you'll find the article. It's called COVID-19 and nature are linked. So should the recovery. Couldn't agree more. Stay safe, stay well. Take a lesson from the Ministry of Forestry in Iceland that recommended that if you can't hug a neighbor or friend in this time of social distancing, then hug a tree. So couldn't agree with them more. Hug a tree this weekend. Stay well. Talk to you soon.